Chris here from Project Option, and in this video we're going to talk about the expected move. Now you might hear the term expected move a lot around earnings announcements, but all the expected move is is the stock's expected price range in the future based on its current option prices. So let's do it. So what is a stock's expected move? The expected move is the one standard deviation expected price range for a stock in the future. So for example, if a stock's 30-day expected move is 5%, then the stock's price is expected to be plus or minus 5% from its current price in 30 days. Now since this is a one standard deviation range, the expected move is the 68% probability range for a stock over a certain time period. So to calculate the expected move for any stock, you need three variables. You need the current stock price, you need the stock's implied volatility, which is matched with the time period you're using for the calculation, and then you need your desired time frame for the expected move. So let's go ahead and go through some examples to show how to calculate the expected move over different time periods. So just really quick before we get to the examples, let's talk about why you have to match the implied volatility to the time period you're calculating the expected move for. Well, as we can see here in this table, different expiration cycles trade with different levels of implied volatility. So let's say you were going to calculate a 70-day expected move. If you're calculating a 70-day expected move, you wouldn't want to use the 7-day IV of 27.5% because that would give you an expected move that's overstated compared to the 24.5% implied volatility. So when you're calculating an expected move, just be conscious of the differences in implied volatilities between expiration cycles and just make sure you use the implied volatility of the expiration cycle that's nearest to the expected move period that you're calculating. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate some expected moves. So the expected move formula is the stock price times implied volatility times the square root of the number of days to expiration over 365. Now, if you're using trading days, then you would just change the number of calendar days to number of trading days, and you'd change the denominator of 365 to 252, since there are 252 trading days in a year. Now both calculations will give you roughly the same number, so it doesn't matter which one you use, just be consistent. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. So let's say we have a $200 stock and we have these different expiration cycles with different levels of implied volatility. So starting with the November 2016 expiration with 7 days to expiration, the implied volatility is 27.5%. So to get the one standard deviation expected move over the next seven days, we take the stock price of 200 times the implied volatility of 27.5% times the square root of 7 over 365. Now that gives us an expected move of $7.62. So that 7.62 means that over the next seven days, there's a 68% probability that the stock price is between 207.62 and 192.38. So as you go through the other expiration cycles, you can use the same formula, but on the next slide, we're actually going to visualize what the expected move over each time period looks like. So this graph visualizes the numbers from the previous table in visual format. So with seven days to expiration, the expected move is plus or minus $7.62. So as we can see here, in seven days, the expected price range is between 207.60 and 192.38. If we go to 35 days to expiration, the expected move is plus or minus $15.64. So in 35 days, the expected stock price range with 68% certainty is between $215.64 and $184.36. Now, as we move further out in time, we can see that the expected range for the stock gets larger and larger, and that's just because with more time until expiration, there's more uncertainty as to what can happen to the stock price, you know, what news can come out that can affect the stock price. So naturally, the expected move for various stocks will be larger and larger over longer periods of time. All right, so let's just recap the main concepts that you've learned from this video. So a stock's expected move is the magnitude of that stock's future price movements with a 68% certainty, so a one standard deviation range. The expected move formula is the stock price times implied volatility 
times the square root of the number of calendar days to expiration divided by 365. And remember, if you're using trading days, change the denominator from 365 to 252. Lastly, when calculating expected moves, make sure you use the implied volatility closest to your calculation period. Thank you for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel as you'll get real-time alerts when we come out with new videos.